Welcome back everyone. I'm Jason and you're watching Jason Jensen Trains. Every year, Foss Scale Models puts out a free kit. Now to get this free kit, you have to order $50 or more from their website. And then you get the free kit. And it's offered for maybe a week. So uh, if you don't want to miss out on the free kit, uh, go to FossScaleModels.com and sign up for their mailing list. And you'll get an email notification every time there's a special offer or a free kit. I say all this because in today's episode, we're going to be building the newest free kit from Fosscale Models. All right, well, we have a lot to do, so let's get to it. Okay, let's get started on this. A very nice 3D printed bottle. You can see it on the top. Okay, so free kits have never come with instructions, uh, but it's so simple. Uh, it really is. It's just four walls, and it has a little um, pop-out in the back. And we've got wood for our bracing, and then wood for the corner trim. All right, we'll get these braced and then we'll come back and stay. Real quick, I wanna show you on this piece here. So this is the base for the entire model to sit on. And you can see there's a sort of a front sidewalk there. That's this right here. Then, there is a, uh, a section that pops out in the back, right there. So that sits like that. So this is the front, that's the back. And then on the side, there's a door. And there's a little step right in front of it. So that step then goes right there. So make sure you don't lose any of these. You need all of it. Again, before we brace, we need to file the edges of the wall. Now this file probably came from Home Depot. Um, I took the handle off mine, but it is eight inches long and six eighths of an inch wide uh, very handy i use this all the time now i just cut the door way out of this and so i want to file that well my other file is too big so now i'm going to use this one and this one is i don't know if you can see that it's a triangle and there's a file it's um it has that texture on all three sides Okay, two of them are the same length, so these are the sides. And then this shorter one is the back. Okay, I've cut my bracing, but I have not glued them on yet. But I just wanted to quick show you how I'm doing this. So on these two walls, I'm doing one right down the center. And this is the back wall of the main building, and then this is the back wall of the little pop-out. And then on the pop-out, the two sides, I'm just putting one all the way on the edge. Then on the side walls of the large building, I'm doing one here on the back corner, and then another one here on the back corner, and then I'm left with um, little shorter ones that I'm putting right in the center. Now you don't want to put these all the way to the edge because there is a very thin frame around that front window and 
that bracing would show. So you want to move it back into the center. Okay, so the bracing is all glued on. And let me go over it real quick again with you because you only get one strip of bracing. Uh, this is the corner trim, but I'm saying you only get one piece one length of the eighth inch thick uh, wood for bracing. So I cut this first to length. Then I cut this one to length. I then cut these two to that length. I then cut these two here to that length. And then that left me a piece that I just cut in half, which gave me these two uh, smaller pieces right here hopefully that makes sense and hopefully that helps you if you are building this at home for our stain we're going to try something new a new color anyways called ocean depths and again it is from best and there is the website right there Now, just to be safe, let's quick do the back side too. Now, as you can see, I'm going pretty thin. If we want it darker, we'll let it dry and add a second coat. And this is alcohol based, so um, it shouldn't warp. Now, this is brand new. Um, I just got some new colors. So I haven't used this before, um, but I'm liking it. I'm definitely going to put on a second coat, though. Okay, we'll give this uh, a few seconds to dry, and then we'll put another coat on. Okay, these are dry. Now I'm going to put the cap back on this. And I'm shaking it upside down. I do that just because of any of the uh, coloring, any of the pigment. Uh, if it settles to the bottom, this is mixing it up so it's a nice solid color. You can see, I don't know if you can tell the difference on camera, but you can tell how it just darkens it up. Oh, I forgot to do the um, corner trim. Okay, next we need to paint our walls. So we're gonna use light rust and yellow. Um, and I'm combining these because I think this is a little too orange. So I'm just gonna add a little bit of yellow to it. Oh, this does not have a cap. Okay, so I've painted the one door yellow. Um, this door gets put on top of it and we'll paint this door brown. Now I've cut this out and that goes on top of there, but I want every other square to be yellow. So I'm just gonna mark Mark my lines. It doesn't, it doesn't have to be perfect. Let's see if it lines up. Yeah, great. Okay, for our brown, we're going to use rust tracks um, because it has red in it. 
or we could use this one. I'm not sure what this one is. Um, old rust, maybe? That might be too red. Well, maybe it for the squares here. You want your brush to be pretty dry after you clean it. You don't want a bunch of water in it because then it'll be runny. Okay, so let's... Yeah, we're going to use rust tracks for our trim color. Now it's kind of thin, so it's going to take uh, two or three coats. This um, ammo paint is kind of thin because um, you can run it straight through your airbrush. You don't need to thin it. I took regular yellow and did a fade on these squares here. I don't know if it shows up. It's still wet. So it's lighter at the top and darker at the bottom. And the reason I did that is because there's a sign that goes across the top and it's right there. And this yellow actually matches that sign. So I wanted that color to tie in to the squares uh, below. And then, you know, while I had that paint out, I did some dry brushing of that light yellow over this door and just a little bit here and there on the wood siding. Um, just so that everything sort of ties together. Next, we need to paint our silver. And for that, we're using dry brush paint by Ammo. I guess today's project is all ammo paint. <laughs> now, there's only two things that need silver. Actually, three things. The ledge for the countertop. Wow, I love this dry brush paint. Um, because of the thickness it just covers so well let's do the bottom just in case okay then the top half of this actually not that part um just the thin parts on this it's important that you not only get the the face of it but the sides you don't want any of this um like cardboard material showing. It's okay if you get a little on the top because there's a, a cutout, a sign that gets glued on there. Again, on this one, you want to not only paint the face of it, but make sure you paint all the sides. This entire piece gets painted silver. This really is the best silver paint that I've ever used. It just covers so well. So I glued together the uh, two pieces that make up the door and I put the acetate in. I also put the acetate in the two small windows. Now I want to put together this and there's a sign that goes at the top. So what I did was I laid the sign on there, or laid the frame on the sign and centered it and then traced around it with a pencil. So now I'll cut this out and glue it on the top of here. Then we can put our frame over the top of it. Now we'll make sure that it fits. Okay, perfect. Now we'll take the frame and glue that on top. Now we need to paint the uh, edges of this. What's nice about this dry brush paint is that it's thick. So it's filling in the little gap in between the two pieces. So it makes it look like it's just one solid piece. Now let's get our 
windows glued in. Okay, there. <laughs> that was a little bit tricky. Now, let's start gluing all of our walls together. Maybe we'll glue our door in first. Yeah, let's do that. Okay, let's start to glue our walls all together. So I'm using the lines on my grid here to make sure this is square. Now first, there's glass that gets put in here. Now when you cut the acetate, you have to make sure that it doesn't go all the way to the edge on both sides because you need to be able to glue that directly to the side walls. Hopefully that makes sense. I'll try to show you up close. If I can get this lined up, okay. So hopefully that's showing up. That it doesn't go all the way to the edge. Okay, let's glue this on quick. We're using Eileen's Tacky Glue. So hopefully you can see where I colored it with the marker. Uh, you don't want the acetate to go all the way to the edge. Because we need to put glue on there to glue it to the wall. Now there's a ledge, a little countertop that gets put right here. So we'll glue that in next. Now we'll glue together our back section. Okay, next we need to glue this onto the back. And you could center it. Um, I'm actually going to put it over, all the way over to one side. Just to give it a little interest. Okay, now for the roofing. It's a little small and what I want to do, I want to add some trim. I just think it looks better when you have trim underneath the overhang. And the overhang of the roof would come directly to the edge of the trim and it needs to go a little bit further. So we're going to have to cut a new card. Um, this would work fine if you're building this at home. If you want to use this, um, it fits perfectly. And there is a, a slight overhang, like a 32nd of an inch. Um, so it, it actually works. Uh, but like I said, I want to add trim around the top and then have the the roof uh, overhang that trim just a little bit. So first let's uh, let's get some strip wood and get some trim put on there. Okay so I've got some strip wood for our trim and we're gonna do around the entire thing. So the trim is all done. The roof on the back is done. Now we're going to take sandpaper, 150 grit sandpaper. Okay, now this is light gray and it's the uh, dry brush paint. Now I want to do something special for the top. Um, as most of you know, I can't just put together a kit um, as the instructions say. So we're going to make this, we're going to do something special on the top here. So here's the roof card. Okay, so that's the piece of cardboard that you get for the roof. And then you fold it up and glue it like that so it makes like a mini pyramid and then you put that on top. I'm going to try something different 
Okay, so we don't need these. We don't need this. Okay, that's pretty wide. I'm gonna make mine a little bit smaller. Okay, so I cut off two sides. Um, let's see. Uh, it's close to an eighth. For those of you that want to know, it is one and fifteen sixteenths on all four sides. Next, I've cut a strip that is three eighths of an inch thick and seven and three eighths long. And then each section, there's I cut it into well, I drew a line. So there's four sections. Uh, let's see, each section is one and seven eighths. Okay, so now we're gonna lightly score those lines. I was hoping this is gonna be a little bit smaller. I might have to cut, might have to cut another one. Yeah, I'm gonna cut another one, unless. Okay, new plan. Uh, again, it's still three eighths of an inch thick, and it is three and five eighths inch long. And then score it in the center and fold it. And now we'll make another one exactly like that. So I think I have uh, a sixteenth of an inch all the way around. Now, let's cut another square just like that. So we'll glue that on there. And then this gets put on the top and then we'll put signs around the top. Now, I don't really like how bulky that looks. We're gonna fix that. It just looked like there was way too much weight up on top there. And I don't know if we need that back. Hmm. Let's see. You know what? Okay. So now I'm covering the inside of it with a uh, black construction paper. I could have painted it, um, but I don't know. I wanted it to have the same look as the uh, black tar paper on the back there. So now I need to decide how to paint this. I'm thinking obviously yellow in the center and then the, the raised areas on the top and the bottom, brown. But do I want to print a sign on my computer that wraps around that? Okay, so now we're going to paint the underside of this in the edges. I'm not quite sure. Yeah, that's enough. Maybe a little wider on this side. Maybe I should glue this on before I paint it. So I got on my computer and I made signs for the three sides. I just simply measured it and then uh, made those same measurements in Photoshop. And now we'll cut these out and glue them on. And I'm using a brand new blade. Now I could have made it as one long piece, but uh, I just didn't know how accurate I was with building this. And I just figured that the sides were going to be slightly different. This way, if I need to, I can trim on both sides and center it on there. <laughs> so I finally bought a big gallon jug of white Elmer's glue.
Okay, let's get this glued on. Sorry there wasn't a lot of talking, <laughs> but it's really hard when you're trying to design something and scratch build it. It's difficult to be talking at the same time because you're trying to figure it out in your head. You don't even know how it's supposed to go together because you're making it up. All right. I should have marked this first. Okay, what next? Signs. So we have a big sign that goes on the side here and then a bunch of little ones. I don't, I'm trying to decide if I should make this a big metal sign. I don't think it would be metal. It's, it's awful big. These definitely um, will rust those and then cut them out. Those will be metal signs, but this would be a paper sign that was put on the side of the building. I'm just taking a gray. It's a Cool gray number two, any gray. And we're just going over the edges to get rid of that paper look. Okay, let's take our City Dark Dust. And dirty up our sign a little bit. Okay, let's get our foundation painted and put on there. Okay, we'll let these dry. And then I'm going to put a, uh, a gray wash over them so the gray gets into all the cracks. Makes it look a little bit more like concrete. Okay, for our wash, we're going to use slate gray. I might make it a little darker. Let's use neutral gray just a little bit. So we quick brush it on and then simply wipe it off okay so I bought some detail parts from Foscale and we're gonna use this big vent so let's let's put a wash over it and again, I'm using the uh, neutral gray. This will just tone it down so it's not so bright. Loctite super glue. All right, we'll quick put some rust on that vent and then we'll paint our root beer bottle I have an assortment of tubes and I think that one will maybe drill a hole and put it on there we're gonna attempt to drill a hole in the bottom of this Okay, that's good. 
it doesn't seem to be drying. I don't know. Maybe it doesn't work on plastic to resin. I don't know. Hmm. Well, let's try liquid nails. It actually seems to be <laughs> to be working. Um, I don't know if it's a combination of the super glue with liquid nails, but yeah, it's it's on there now. Wow, that's good to know. Okay, we'll drill a hole in the roof, put that down in there. Wow, that is solid. Now I'm cutting some brass wire for some supports. Oh, and the brass wire is from Titchy Train Group. That's TitchyTrainGroup.com. Now we'll attempt to glue these on. All right, we'll get a little bit of rust on that pole. Maybe some on the wires. I'm <laughs> putting my hand in it. <laughs> okay, I think that wraps this project up. So you can see it just gives it a little different look having that flat roof on it. All right, let's go take this over to the layout and find a home for it. All right, well, I think this is the perfect spot for this little structure. This was such a fun project to work on. And I hope you all learned uh, some new tips and techniques in today's video. Well, as always, thank you so much for watching. I truly appreciate it. And please take a moment to subscribe to the channel and be sure to click on that bell up in the corner to be notified when I upload new videos. All right, well, until next time, Stay motivated and happy modeling, everyone.